You manifesting what you want isn't taking away from anybody else. The idea that it is actually comes from a lack mindset in itself. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if this is your first time here. My name is Lorena and I am a self-concept coach. I support women to shift their identity, shift their self-concept so that you can align with your authentic soul desires and manifest anything that you truly deeply desire in your life. If you end up liking this video, I would appreciate a little like, a little comment, and if you want to stick around for future videos, please subscribe if you haven't done that yet. I upload videos at least once a week, and I also invite you to check out the links in the description box below because you can find free resources and master classes there so you can get started on your journey yourself. In today's video, I primarily want to speak to a really deep belief that I have in you, in your desires, and in the purpose of them. And I think it's so important to speak to the purpose of your desires and why you have them and how they serve you and how they serve others because very often when we desire anything in life because of what society tells us because of maybe some preconceived notions that we have ourselves we start judging ourselves for whatever it is that we want to create to manifest to experience so as you may have heard in this intro if you didn't skip it <laughs> I always speak to authentic soul desires and I want to explain a little bit what I mean by this because you might wonder yourself, is what I desire authentic to my soul? Is it coming from my ego? Is it okay to want what I want? Am I selfish for wanting this? Am I taking away from somebody else? Am I allowed to want this? Do I deserve this? Do I deserve to dream this big? You might be asking yourself one or multiple of these questions. So that's why I just wanna take a moment to speak to authentic desires versus inauthentic desires, or let's call them soul desires versus ego desires. And to that, I want to say first and foremost that every desire that we have that's somehow materialistic, right? So it's a specific tangible experience like a relationship or like an adventure or like a trip somewhere specific or it could be more tangible things in terms of things that you receive. So it could be money, it could be getting a specific job, it could be a house. Anything that's physical, anything that's tangible comes inherently from your ego just by default because your soul, your higher self, doesn't really care for physical, tangible things. It's your ego through which you experience those. So that means that any desire that goes beyond I desire a feeling, I desire a sense of freedom, or I desire to feel love inherently comes from your ego. And very often when we speak about ego desires, people make that mean something negative, right? Oh, if it comes from my ego, I shouldn't want it. So I want to make this really clear that pretty much every desire you have in your life is somehow connected to your ego. You wouldn't really have tangible desires if it wasn't for your ego, because your ego is all about separation. It sees itself separate from the rest of the world. So it's through this sense of separation that you even want anything for yourself at all. Because if you don't see yourself as separate from others, then it doesn't matter whether a desire comes to you or comes through other people, whether it's directly or indirectly. So every desire comes from your ego every tangible physical desire at least. Now that does not mean that all desires are equal. All of this is actually a very extensive topic and process that I tend to move through with my clients. And when we work together, this is one of the first things we will do, is get clear on desires, on a vision, but not just to create a vision, but to also take a part what the hows and whys behind the desire are. Is this a primary desire or is it a secondary desire that represents something deeper for you? Do you want this relationship because 
you just feel drawn to it and you just feel so in love? Or do you want it because you want validation? Do you want this job because it feels like your soul is drawing you to it and it feels like your dream career? Or do you want it because when you were a child, your parents told you or society programmed into you that this is the job that would make you the most valued and respected and wealthy? So these are just some examples of secondary desires. So desires that are actually just connected to something else. And there is a lot that can already come up in this process of getting clear on your desires, getting honest about why you want what you want, what your intention is with it. And that's really important for tangible physical desires because at the end of the day, all you want is a feeling. All you truly want is just a feeling, a sensation, the experience of a specific state. It's often not really about the desire itself, but that doesn't mean that there aren't tangible implications for how you want that feeling to manifest. It is totally okay to want that feeling to be experienced through a specific desire, through a specific manifestation. So all that being said, what is really important for you to manifest these ego desires and to not judge yourself or then blame yourself for anything and to actually be on the path to making them happen is to work on integrating your ego really deeply because the more you've integrated your ego the clearer it will be for you to see where your desires come from what the validity of them is meaning do you actually really want this or are you just trying to prove something to yourself or to others and the easier it will be for you to manifest what you truly desire, whether that's the desire you initially thought of or something else, and to actually make it happen so you don't block yourself through having the ego kind of be in the way. And with all that, I want to be really clear that the ego is not the enemy, which I actually did create a video about as well recently. So that is the first thing I want to acknowledge. There is a difference in sort of the hierarchy. It's not really the right word, but let's say the hierarchy of desires, not all of them are the same. And just because something may be coming from or initiated from or want to be experienced through your ego doesn't mean you can't have it or you shouldn't want it. Which brings me to the core message of this video, which is that wanting what you want is not selfish. Your desires are not selfish. Even when your desires come from your ego, that doesn't mean you're being selfish for wanting it. You manifesting what you want isn't taking away from anybody else. The idea that it is actually comes from a lack mindset in itself, right? If I believe that everything is limited, that I can only win if somebody else loses, of course I'm gonna block myself, if I'm a good person that is, I'm gonna block myself from creating that for myself, from receiving that, from manifesting it, because subconsciously I will keep believing that if I achieve it, someone else won't. And this could not be further from the truth. And I'll explain a bit later why that is so inaccurate. There is this beautiful quote by Marianne Williamson from A Return to Love. I'm sure many of you will have read this. If you haven't, it is a beautiful text that works with reflections on the spiritual text, A Course in Miracles. But there's this famous quote from it, which you may have heard before, and that's, our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, which most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. 
So this entire quote is obviously beautiful, but the key thing that I want to pick out from this for the moment is that your playing small does not serve the world. If you settle for less than what you truly want, you are not helping anybody. In fact, you are keeping other people just as small. A while ago, I had a conversation with some friends who had been very limited in their thinking in conversation. Lots of lack mindset around money, lots of negativity about the world. And this is not about bypassing anything, right? It's not that if somebody is having trouble with their finances in the moment, or if we look at the situation of what's happening in the world and that there's negative things happening, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. It's not about ignoring that or pretending that it doesn't exist, but there's also no point in constantly complaining and being in fear around it because that will impact you and your state so significantly and that will not create change in the world either. Change is driven by desire, not by fear, at least the best change and the most long lasting change. So I had to speak to my friends and I had to ask them to please not bring all these limitations around money and this negativity around what's wrong in the world and in the city to every single conversation because it really impacted me and we're not doing, doing anything actively we're not changing anything actively by just talking about it and complaining about it if that's all you do and a lot of people are in this mindset and if you're around people like that all of the time that will impact you and if you show up differently if you lead by example that will impact them so let's bring it back a little why do you think you have desires in the first place they are not punishment you are not being punished by being given a desire you don't receive this yearning or this wanting so that you can suffer for the rest of your life because it's not happening it's a gift for you and it's an opportunity for you you get a chance to make it happen for example in the beginning of my business and this doesn't really happen to me anymore but in the beginning of my business people would sometimes ask for discounts and I would always say no and there was always a part of me that felt like pleasing everybody around me until I realized I am actually keeping people small by telling them that they can't make things happen right if I tell someone oh yeah you'll never have enough money to make this investment that you want to make by discounting my services I'm not helping anyone and you can apply this obviously to lots of different situations if you always try to get everyone to like you and that's how you make your decisions if you never set boundaries you're actually not helping them it might feel like it in the moment because in that moment you are validating what they want but in the long run you're not helping them so if I minimize my own worth in that case by discounting my services I minimize others worth as well because I'm not keeping them in their most empowered version of themselves if you constantly betray yourself just to get others to like you you're not doing them any favors and you're certainly not doing yourself any favors you are then keeping yourself stuck and you are also keeping others stuck others are not able to grow if you abandon yourself and you don't stick to your own needs and wants and desires now i firmly believe that your desires your true desires the ones that are really authentic to you the ones that are primary desires they actually serve other people you are literally doing the world a disservice by staying small and not going for what you want by settling for less by not betting on yourself by not believing in yourself let's say for example you have the desire to start your own business if you don't follow that hunch if you don't do that if you don't make that dream manifest if you don't follow that vision you're dreaming of then all the people that you would normally be able to impact with that vision that you have they will not receive your gifts if I hadn't started my business you would not be sitting here watching this video right now and you would not be taking anything from this because it wouldn't exist <laughs> I would not have been able to help 
so many women who have changed their lives so radically and manifested things that they've been wanting for years, sometimes decades. If I had said, oh, that's selfish of me to want to make money or to charge for my services or to put myself out there and be seen or whatever the story would be that I could have had in my head. It wasn't selfish, it was service. And even if you don't have a business or you don't want to start one, but you have the desire to make money or make a lot of money, create a lot of wealth in your life, if that is what you want, you're actually not helping anybody by not creating that wealth and abundance. Because the more abundance, the more wealth you create, the more you can give to your family, to your loved ones, to the people around you, the more you can give to the charities you care for. You can employ people and provide jobs for them. And even if you don't have a business, let's say you can hire a cleaner or you can hire somebody who can just do things for you that you don't enjoy too. Or to get away from the purpose and abundance topic, let's talk about love. If you don't create and manifest the love that you desire, if you don't follow that, if you play it safe and you stay small and you're like, it's fine, I can just stay alone, maybe the family that you're supposed to have won't come into existence. Maybe the life that you're supposed to birth will never exist. Just think about that. Just the impact of you keeping your heart closed and you settling for less than what you want. It causes such a ripple effect. The actions you take, who you are being in each moment, the behaviors, the steps you take, the future you create or don't create, it causes such a ripple effect to everyone around you. And your desires are a gift to you, aren't they? And what do you do with a gift? You don't reject it. You don't minimize it kind of rude, (laughs) you receive it. You accept it with gratitude. The more you allow yourself to receive, the more others get to receive as well. And the more you step into your most authentic, most aligned self, the more others get to do that too. You give them permission to do that through it. Like you heard in the quote, or you read in the quote. Your desires are a gift to you and your manifestations are a gift to the entire planet. So think long and hard whether you'd rather stay where you are or whether you'd rather stay in wishful thinking, hoping that one day something will change and it will magically all happen and fall into your lap or whether you'll continue to push through everything and try everything on your own. Think about what you're going to do with that awareness of how important your desires are. And I've now been speaking about how you can serve others through your desires. But let's talk about how you actually change other people through the manifestations that you bring in. And more so through your own transformation and through you shifting your identity, shifting your self-concept. That has such a massive impact to everyone around you and ultimately the collective. Because if you keep yourself small, if you don't believe in yourself, you will project that out onto everyone around you. But if you make something big happen for yourself, if you step into your most empowered version of yourself, you show others what's possible for them too. You impact the people you surround yourself with and they impact you. So if you want good for the world, you want to be a good influence for them. And that means being your most empowered self your most confident self, your most aligned self. It's so important to remember that working on your self-concept is not just about you. It seems selfish at first glance. It seems like, oh, I'm just doing this for me because I want all these things and I want to experience this. But if you have a pure intention, that's not true. This is about so much more than you. And yes, this is going to transform your life. Yes, you get to be who you've always desired to be and sometimes even more than that because sometimes our imagination can't even conceive of it. And yes, you'll get to manifest your deepest desires. And also it's going to cause a ripple effect to everyone around you. Your family, your children, your friends, your lover, your colleagues, everyone. Probably even the guy downstairs working at the supermarket. Because it's not just the actions that they see, it's also the energy that you emit just through existing. When you change your state so radically, when you shift your identity, there's an energetic component that plays into it as well. 
There's a magnetism that comes from you. Through changing your self-concept, you actually get to change the world. People often ask me, how do I deal with the bad things happening in the world? How do we manifest a different world? How do we break down the systems that don't serve the collective? How do we create peace in the world? And obviously there's probably initiatives and causes that you feel really passionate about and I will always encourage you to pour into that, to give to that, to stand up for what's right. And also I firmly believe that the way we change the world is by changing ourselves first and foremost because it's the individual that impacts the collective. And it might sometimes be a slow burn, but this is how it happens. If we change ourselves, we inspire others to change too. So this video ended up being longer than intended, but let's get a conversation going in the comments. I would love to hear what your takeaways are from this video, what your thoughts are, and I will see you in next week's video.